Good morning. Uh, welcome here to uh, on this very autumnal late October morning. Uh, late being the word, I do apologise. Um, technical issues again. Um, you'd think I'd learn. Well, I was learning. I started earlier, but it just had to involve a few restarts of the computer and things slowing down and looking at permissions. One day it lets me use the camera, the next day it doesn't, and I'm not quite sure why. Um, and I'm reluctant to use my tablet because the sound on there is <clears throat> the sound on there is is um, not usually quite so great. Um, anyway, it's good to be with you now, and you can see that I've got the cat with me as well. Again, she's not too keen on this weather, um, and uh, she's yet to find her resting place for the whole of the uh, of the day. Um, so she's here with me now. Someone said that she should get a dog collar, but if you look at her. She actually, under her chin, she has got, it, it's, it's quite white. Here's that cat, look. Come on, chin up. Yeah. We've already got one, haven't you? She doesn't need one. You know, I'll probably, I'll probably take after her rather than her taking after me. Uh, although I can change the colour of my shirt and she can't. Anyway, it's great to, to be uh, with you today. And um, it's, oh, yes, uh, it's, uh, oh, fine. yeah, it's lovely to be looked at so adoringly on occasions. It's just a shame about the sharp claws that she, she seems to accompany things with. But there we go. Morning to everybody, or should I say good afternoon, really? If you are watching in the afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, today being Thursday, uh, we're kind of starting to look towards the end of the week, uh, starting to, to look towards the weekend. And just a reminder that we have our services 9.30 at Stratton and at Stanton and 11 o'clock at South Marston. It would be great um, to, to see you there. Um, but we also have our services online at 10 o'clock on Facebook. Or, um, we need to record that first though, and that's what, uh, that's what today, uh, this morning, will entail. I'll let you into a little secret there. Let's just have a moment of quiet as we recognise that we are coming into Almighty God's presence. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that, you will, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And to use the words of Psalm 143 today. Psalm 143 starts with this refrain. Show me, O Lord, the way that I should walk in. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant. 
for in your sight shall no one living be justified. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. My spirit faints within me, my heart within me is desolate. I remember time past, I muse upon all your deeds, I consider the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you, my soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O oh Lord, make haste to answer me, my spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, for I flee to you for refuge. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness sake, bring me out of trouble. In your faithfulness, slay my enemies and destroy all the adversaries of my soul, for truly I am your servant. Show me, O Lord, the way that I should walk in. Jesus, our companion, when we are driven to despair, help us through the friends and strangers we encounter on our path to know you as our refuge, our way, our truth and our life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. If you would like to read the Old Testament reading today, there's a lot of numbers, but it's from Kings. So wait for this, it's 2 Kings 23, 36 to 24, 17. Look at it, it's a lot of numbers. 2 Kings, chapter 23, verse 36, to chapter 24, verse 17. Lot of numbers. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them into the comments. So that. Even this is taking time. In a moment, oh, this is easier. Excuse me, not that. There we go. Um, in a moment, we're going to read 1 Timothy 4. Much easier. Before we do that, though, we're going to use a song of the covenant. I've given you as a light to the nations, and I've called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, I have called you in righteousness. We've had, apart from uh, yesterday where there was a bit of a di diversion because um, uh, because it was a day where we remembered um, Jude, was it Simon and Jude? Can't quite remember, sorry. It was a different day. Um, we, we now go back to, to 1 Timothy. 
I have to say, um, I did not envy Alvin as she read passage the other day. And I, I thought she explained it very well. And it's actually good to read these passages and to discuss them and, and to look at them carefully. As we, as we mentioned the other day on Sunday, or as I mentioned the other day on Sunday, the Bible can, um, can offer some challenging, can offer some challenging passages. It can, you know, sometimes it's called a sword. And with a sword, you can, you can do some damage. And unfortunately, the way that sometimes passages have been taken out of context or particular passages have been used have caused a lot of damage. So it's good that we read it in the context that it was written, that we think carefully about it. And we recognise that we live many, many years later in a different culture. And we might read when we're reading a document which is thousands of years old that was written in a language which has been translated into English, which has different, um, again, different kind of versions and translations. Uh, we need to look at it very carefully. Um, that's not to dismiss it as something of the past, but it is to look at it with, with careful eyes. It's a long way around saying that Alvin did a good job. 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will renounce the faith by paying attention to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared with a hot iron. They forbid marriage, they forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected, provided it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. If you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ, nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with profane myths and old wise tales. Train yourselves in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way. Holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, for to this end we toil and struggle, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the saviour of all people, especially of those who believe. These are the things we must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith and in purity. Until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through the prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders, Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing, doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think I got the easier job this this uh, today. There isn't really much there that you could argue against, is there? Paul is sending this letter of encouragement, of exhortation, to somebody who he obviously has a lot of love, a lot of respect, and a lot of concern for, in that kind, almost like that fatherly or big brotherly way. He's kind of warning him. He's preparing him. What do they say? Um, forewarned is forearmed. Is that right? I don't know. Anyway, being ready for something really helps, doesn't it? 
and to know the barriers that he might face, to know the dangers that he might face will give him that, um, give him and all those that were kind of going with him that kind of, um, um, yeah, preparation. He'll be ready for it for when, it, when he, he has these people that argue against him. Put on these instructions, you know, nourish on the words of the faith and sound teaching that you've already followed. Have nothing to do with profane myths and old wives tales. I guess that's, it is all applicable to us. It's about strengthening our spiritual muscles as much as our physical muscles. It is good um, to exercise and to look after our bodies, to, to, to kind of be concerned what we put out of it, what, sorry, what we put into it uh, and what we do with our bodies. As, as Alvin said, our, our bodies are a temple and um, we do need to look after them. And I think that's been made abundantly clear over the last six months. It certainly brought it home to me quite a lot. Um, but actually it's those spiritual muscles as well. And actually morning prayer, the disciplines of morning prayer and, and evening prayer or night prayer uh, and praying and studying the and studying the scriptures and coming together in this way or coming together uh, in, in a um, physical way on a Sunday if we're able to do so um, or whatever day of the week it might be is important and it's something which it's a privilege I continue to say it's a privilege and pleasure to do um, and something which Hopefully, we've all found strength from in these trying times. As we remember, we have been called by name and we are gods and we've been called to be a light to the nations. We pray for our nation. We have a role not just to make that wish, but to make the things that we pray for, the coming of God's kingdom into a reality, setting an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith and in purity. A high calling, but it's something we're all called to. We have these responses. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Come to the Benedictus. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on, <coughs> excuse me, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. 
Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of the right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Excuse me. And this has been our custom for a number of years now. Sorry, cat sitting on it. Um, we come now to our blessings and uh, we look to bless, pray God's blessings on our communities and uh, on our nation. So let's, um, in a moment of quiet, let's bring before God those on whom we wish particularly to bring uh, that God's blessings would be felt. We pray for those on our hearts who we know are suffering in body, mind or spirit. For those places that need to feel in particular God's blessings this day. Those situations where we wish God's blessings to be felt most acutely this day. Speaking our blessings across our parishes and across our communities and our nation and God's world comes from the Bible, which tells us that when we speak blessings over people, God responds. So claiming the promises of his word, we pray in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we take upon ourselves the authority Jesus delegated to us and in his name we speak to every household within our parishes and across our communities. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We bless your relationships that they may be strong and whole. We bless the relationship between each partner that it may be loving, forgiving, merciful and strong. We bless every intergenerational relationship within each household, that there may be peace and love and understanding flowing between each one. In Jesus' name, we, speak, we bless every network of wholesome and supportive friendship. We bless your health, that you may be strong and well. Bring to mind all those on our hearts who we know are suffering in body, mind or spirit. In Jesus' name we resist any sickness or disease which seeks to invade these communities and to every person we say be well, be strong, be healthy. To any who are sick right now, we say we bless you in Jesus' name for a speedy and full recovery. We bless those who are in the autumn of their lives and all those who live and work in residential care, that they may know the peace and presence of God in their hearts. And in Jesus' name, we, bless, we pray that they will have assurance and hope for the future. We speak blessings of patience, wisdom, love, compassion and protection to all carers and associated staff. We bless the wealth of every person in our communities, that they may have plenty to replace poverty. We bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. 
we bless the work of your hands, that whatever you turn your hand to, which is wholesome, may be profitable. We bless every wholesome enterprise that's conducted by you, that it may prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, we bless the businesses operating within our bounds, that they will flourish and employee-employer relationships will be wholesome, fair and full of integrity. We bless our local preschools and schools that they may be secure and safe for teachers and pupils alike. We bless the children's capacity to learn and develop relationships. We bless the governors and all the staff that they will know that they can trust and flourish if they put their faith in the Lord Jesus. We pray your blessing on all contact the church has with them in Jesus' name. We bless the local doctors, nurses, district nurses, pharmacists, community nurses, carers, those working in public health, scientists, all those working in our clinics, surgeries and hospitals. And we pray for all, particularly the staff of Sandoval Court, as they minister to people, we pray that they will have protection, wisdom, guidance, gentleness, and understanding for all of those in their care. We pray for the emergency services as they operate within our bounds, that they will be blessed with safety, protection, and wisdom. We bless those working in the police, ambulance and fire stations across our town and in our region. We pray for the local councils, the local parish councils, the borough council and our national government. And we pray that they will be blessed as they serve the communities, as they serve and pray that they may be guided as they seek the best for them, and that they look towards the future with wisdom. We pray for them, especially at this time where they have to make decisions that all of us would struggle with, and none of us seem to be able to completely agree on. We pray for them, dear Father. And we speak to all the Christians in our communities and we say we bless you in the name of the Lord that the Holy Spirit and the word of God will flow out from you in power. We bless the hearts of all who live here that you may be quickened to hear and respond to the voice of the living God. We bless all those who live and work here that the overspill of blessings and the presence of the kingdom of God may fall upon you. And we bring our prayers together using the words of um, today's collect and then the Lord's Prayer. Um, today is a day where we remember James Hannington who was Bishop of Eastern Equatorial Africa and a martyr in Uganda at all long time ago in 1885. Most merciful God, who strengthened your church by the steadfast courage of your martyr, James Hannington, grant that we also thankfully remember his victory of faith, may overcome what is evil and glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I've been uh, listening to the podcasts that the Church of England have been, um, that the Church of England produce, and I've been listening to night prayer, very last thing at night, uh, on the headphones, led in bed, and uh, it's been really, it's been really um, 
been really interesting. I've been really good. It's a lovely way to end the day. And um, it, they've been led by uh, Archbishop Justin. And he says, um, so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us in whichever form or language that you wish to use. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you again for joining me. And uh, it's uh, and thank you for the comments. I don't know if I see all the comments, but I, I certainly see those uh, some of those coming through. Um, and I think that this time of morning prayer it is a great way to come together, and it's a great way to demarcate days which have been very different. Uh, and actually, we face more uncertainty, don't we? And we're not quite sure what the next few weeks bring. And if we're able. We should be thankful that we are able to come together in this way. But, uh, some might not be able to, um, but it is a great uh, privilege and pleasure to do so. And I do hope you have a great and safe day today. So may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless you and keep you this day. See you soon.